Hey, Brad here with Breva Creative. Today we have something really awesome for y'all. A couple months back we posted a video about DIY clay cutters that were 3D printed. We used our filament 3D printer for this and we did not get the best results. So today we are going to switch things up a little bit and use our brand new resin 3D printer instead. My hunch is that the resin 3D printer is going to give us much sharper, cleaner edges, which is definitely something that you want when you're working with polymer clay. So before you go out and buy the first custom clay cutters that you find on Etsy, give this video a watch and you may find that not all polymer clay cutters are made equal. Check it out. First off, a little B-roll from our baby little fab lab. This first printer is our FDM filament printer. It's a monoprice and we love it. Next we've got our brand new resin printer from Anycubic. We haven't really played with it much yet so far, but we are loving it as well. Check out the links below for more info. We've got a new dual extruder maker bot that needs a little love and tinkering before it's ready to use, but we are super excited about that bad boy too. And if you don't know, here is the difference between resin and filament printers. With resin, you can get really fine detail, where filament, you can always see the layers. What I'm curious about, though, is whether this is Clifford the Big Yellow Duck, or if this is the world's smallest collie. Well, existential questions notwithstanding, let's get printing on our resin printer. There's really not much to it. Uh, we designed the cutter with SketchUp's online software, linked to video below if you want to see that process. But really, it's just tightening a few screws, adding some liquid resin, and let it do its thing. Also, working in a ventilated area when resin printing, um, we really don't have one of those, so we always leave the room while it's running and turn a ceiling fan on. The yellow lid helps to remediate some of the odor, but its real purpose is to keep UV light from hitting the resin. That's essentially how it builds the print, is by flashes of really bright light in the tray for each layer of the print. So if you have other UV light beams dancing all around while your print is going, it might start to harden or cause other issues. So this print took a couple of hours, but with the magic of video editing, it is all done. Let's see how it turned out. First I cleaned them off with a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol and gloves, definitely gloves. So far super happy with these, they look nice and sharp, maybe a little bit brittle, but putting them under our UV light might help to cure them fully. Now one thing I'll say about this printer, I'm not sure if this is standard resin printer behavior or not, but man is it hard sometimes to get these prints off the printer bed. Using a X-Acto has worked the best for us so far. Uh, the scraper that came with this kit makes it a little bit more challenging. Next we're just going to do a quick rinse in rubbing alcohol just to get all the leftover resin off before we cure it fully. I do see a small little nick in one of the cutters. We are going to just go ahead and test it anyways to see how it works, but I definitely love to do a reprint before we make a bunch of these earrings. All right, time to get our UV light out. To me, this thing looks like an alien spaceship that's getting ready to beam up some little plastic trinkets. We generally do about 60 to 90 seconds on each side and then just flip them and do that again on the other side. Uh, that should really be all you need uh, just to cure the whole thing fully. So there we have it, some awesome little polymer clay cutters. I have a hunch that these are going to work so much better than the filament printer ones that we made. Uh, they've got really nice sharp edges, uh, they're very precise. There is this one little chip in the stretchy hexagon that I mentioned, but we're just going to go with it for now and see what happens. So now you can start to see the issue with the FDM print versus the resin print. The resin print has a beautiful knife edge while the white one has more of like a ziggurat stepped pyramid kind of vibe. The nice sharp edge will help to cut the clay rather than just to mush it and leave jaggedy edges behind. So now I'll hand it over to Eva to see what she thinks and get some clay cutting done. I am so excited to finally compare these two. I've definitely seen prints from both the 3D printers, but I now finally get to compare side by side identical prints. The cutters here, the resin versus the filament print. I am 
looking at it and inspecting it and it is so much fun. First off, I definitely noticed that the resin printer has sharper edges. Now that might be because the filament print was on a slightly faster resolution, but also the layering, the way that the layers are created in the filament print makes it clear that there's only a certain amount of resolution that's even possible. I am so excited to try these two side by side and I definitely took tips from the last polymer clay video, a link here. You guys left a lot of great tips and I definitely got a better quality clay. I am using the ceramic tiles as commented and I got one of these cool clay cutters and I'm going to jump into it and see how this goes. Maybe it'll do better than last time. So first off, I am going to kind of mellow out this green. It is a bright neon green, and I'm just gonna mix it half and half with white so it's slightly less vibrant, but still plenty neon. I'm just gonna knead that up really good, roll it out, and then we can get to testing our cookie cutters. I did notice some bubbles from the clay, but I popped those and rolled it out and it wasn't a big deal. So I'm going to test them side by side. So the gray color is the resin print and the white is the PLA filament print. And again, check out our last video for how I created the SketchUp file and the print file for these, the hexagons and the rainbows. So pressing down, I'm not noticing much of a difference. Um, they're both cutting into the clay, similar, but when I'm actually looking at the cut out bits, I'm noticing that the white does leave a slightly wider line and a slightly hairier edge. I'll show you in a moment. So I'm just going to clean these up a little bit with this fabulous clay blade. And I did mark with white clay the ones that were with the white cutter, which is the filament, so we can pay attention as they bake. And I'm doing a second round with the starch to see if that has any effect on either of the cutters, just to give them both a fair shot. Again, marking them with white to tell us which is which. And now that they are baked, I'm going to separate them so that the white ones are on the side with the white cutters and the gray ones are on the side with the gray cutters. I am absolutely thrilled with this clay. It came out so much better than the other clay that I used in my previous video. I'm not sure if that's the quality of the clay or the oven or a combination, but it's awesome. I'm showing you close-ups here of the white on the right and the gray cutters on the left. You will notice on the kind of stretched out hexagon that there is a chunk on the gray side that is left a little rough and that is because of that chipped bit that Brad showed you earlier. But in general, the white definitely does leave a slightly rougher edge, which ultimately means that you're gonna have to come back and trim that or sand it or do something to clean that up so that your finished product is nice and pristine. While the gray does feel slightly more fragile than the white, it is clear that it does cut slightly better and cleaner and requires less cleanup. So when you are looking to buy custom polymer clay cutters, I highly recommend buying some that are made with a resin printer instead of a filament printer, which Unfortunately, a lot of the ones out there are made with filament printers, so make sure to check the listing. And hey, if y'all want us to design some custom clay cutters with our resin printer, let us know and we might be able to throw those up on our Etsy. Who knows? So like, subscribe, and help us get to monetization. Right now, we're at about a quarter of the way there, which is awesome and super exciting. So keep liking, keep commenting. Uh, we appreciate all your comments, so let us know and see you next time.